everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good morning to all my morning viewers. I'm going to show you what's going on with this pretty much atmospheric flooding, this extreme flooding that's still coming to the south, and it has grown to other potentials that could come out of that, as well as what's going on with Invest 91L and the tropics. Texas has been getting some rainfall last night, so has Louisiana and the northeast. But you do have the marginal still for the flash flood into early this morning and a little bit of a slight risk. But it's going to grow, especially for today. Now, it's going to be a big slight risk in a moderate section on western Texas for today. Some from northern Florida as well. As you're going through tomorrow, you're still in a big slight risk in a moderate section. Marginal all across Texas and a big slight risk over here in eastern Texas. Then as you go through Friday, it's going to spread out across the southeast. Then as you go through Saturday, it's still going to be a big slight risk. You're already going to have so much rainfall. Any little bit would put you in an extreme level and you got a lot coming from two different systems still. As you go from Saturday into Sunday, you're still in a huge slight risk for all this flash flooding that is still coming. And you can see the SpaghettiOs, what's going on in Invest 91L. Most of them will show it is still going to turn to the north, no big deal. And I am showing that we got a potential, potential cyclone coming sometime later next week. Still not showing a lot of promise. I'm still showing we're going to be in an unfavored environment. One over here in Northern Atlantic still is just going to fuse up and move. And the one coming off Africa is still headed north. Now we do have Invest 92E over here in the Pacific, as well as another disturbance growing. And this is predicted to move west, northwest. The Euro is showing that this energy will crash in somewhere by Baja California into Mexico and could contribute a possible low pressure forming over Texas when you get all this moisture from that second Caribbean wave. Now, National Hurricane Center did update some information. It's still 80% in five days, but 60% in the next 48 hours. Today is day 60 for the record, guys. So we are already passed second for the, the historic record for longest gap between storms and in the Atlantic. Tomorrow, we're going to tie first. And this doesn't form by tomorrow, which it don't look like it. Look, like it's going to take it maybe two to maybe three days before it forms. Either way, it still looks like we're going to break that record. We're going to be the historical hurricane season this year. They do have updated information. Shower and thunderstorm activity associated with an area of low pressure located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles has continued to increase and become more concentrated overnight. However, recent satellite wind data indicate that the circulation remains elongated and lacks a well-defined center. Although environmental conditions are only marginally conducive, additional gradual development of this system is expected and a tropical depression is likely to form within the next couple of days. Now you can see here on the latest intensity guidance of Invest 91L, it is predicted somewhere within the next 24 hours to maybe become a tropical storm. All the ensembles are more likely showing maybe 48 hours away. So we're either going to tie first or beat first for the longest gap. After that, it takes off really powerful, which means it's gonna curve out to the north and pull itself, but there's an upper level low that could make it turn a little west, bring some rainfall towards northern Puerto Rico, maybe even the Lesser Antilles Islands, just a little bit, like an inch and a half of rainfall, not much. So taking a new guidance according to National Hurricane Center in 24 hours, this low pressure possible tropical cyclone is still going to be moving to the west northwest in 48 hours this high pressure is going to retract back but we have an upper level low that's giving us issues while this makes that west northwest turn it retracted back lets it move more north northwest than west but in 72 hours we have this upper level low over here that could be pulling us a little bit further in before it turns. Still no threat to anybody. Like I said, it could be more rainfall from Northern Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, maybe even Lesser Antilles Islands. Not much. That's only shown by the Euro. The rest of them show that it is going to strengthen and go away anyway. Now you can see with the GOES satellite, not satellite, that it, about 72 hours, it'll be pretty far away and it's still going to be somewhat weak. But it does show that once it gets around four days, five days tops, that's when it starts strengthening and that's when it starts moving to the north. Either way, 
All models are showing it will be weak as it passes by. So if you do get some precipitation in Puerto Rico or Lesser Antilly Islands, it will be a little bit amount. And you can see how it's still moving to the north, going out, no threat to anybody. And the NASA satellite does show that it does get pretty strong. All of them show it gets pretty strong out there in the Atlantic, down to a 962 so far. Now, when you look with the dust particles, according to the NASA satellite, you can see you do have some dust that gets up in there. You do have some dry air. It does mess up that center. Then it recycles. Then it starts strengthening. And you can see all the precipitation getting around it, showing it's going a little bit further than with the Euro, showing still no threat to anybody. But you pretty much can see pretty much a hurricane form coming out of the precipitation. This thing is really going to strengthen real big in the Atlantic. So we do need to watch out for Bermuda. It is going right by Bermuda. And when you look at a 500 millibars way up in atmosphere, according to the Euro, you can see the dry air from the dust just wrapping around the system, not bringing much precipitation to anybody. Then as the upper level low starts to retract and come south, it makes this bend a little bit further to the south as you go through September 7th. But take this with a grain of salt, this is like eight days away and only the Euro is showing that it could go down a little bit. Not going to strengthen, but it could bring some rainfall and that's about it before it pulls back away. And when you look at the 850 millibar levels lower than our 500, you can see that the dry air does not really hinder this storm too much. That's why it's able to contain and hold itself all through that dry air. It is trying at the 500 millibars, but it's still able to breathe a little bit out the tops. And the Euro don't show it strengthening up much at all. All the other models show it will strengthen up regardless. And when you look at the temperatures at 850 millibars, you can see that the dust does cap this to where no thunderstorms can grow. It's warm air aloft, warmer than the temperatures below, and it caps thunderstorms. It inhibits it from really growing at all. So all these warm temperatures from this dust is going to keep it weak, at least until it passes by Puerto Rico, starts heading a little more to the northwest, then it's going to shoot out into the Atlantic. But the pressure system, according to the Euro, just not showing much of anything. You might get a surface low literally in four days. So according to the Euro, we're definitely beating that record, but it's not showing much strength at all. So if it does do this with the Euro showing this morning, you could get some rainfall, like I said, for Puerto Rico, Lesser Antilles, Dominican Republic. Not much. GFS agrees as well. Not saying much about GFS this year. But it's showing that it will turn early and just head out and strengthen like the other models show. And you can see the dust coming off the MDR, the main development region. After that, it's just hindering any development on anything. We do have another wave expected to come. But with this dry air moving with it, I expect it also to be unfavorable environment while it moves west. And you can see this here from your global tropics from August 31st all the way to September 6th. They're expecting a tropical cyclone in the Eastern Pacific, and they're expecting a tropical cyclone out of Invest 91L bringing historical above average rainfall. While they have a possible tro tropical depression of greater strength, another cyclone could form off the coast of Africa and start heading north. But from September 7th all the way to September 13th, they are expecting a development of another tropical cyclone, tropical depression, or a greater strength in the MDR. But when you check the chances for a tropical depression, you can see a few things. Not only is it expected in 72 hours to be at 100% chance for a tropical depression, as it moves forward and all this precipitation moves from this tropical wave through Central America, it is expected to curve back five days away, six. As you keep going, you can see that all this energy as this turns away will start concentrating on Texas. And within 10 days, take it with a grain of salt, it is 10 days, Euro is showing there's a potential for the surface low to form with all that moisture, all that precipitation coming back around. We also could get some front-induced lows that could be an issue when we get these cool fronts coming down. So just be warned, even though the MDR is not showing much promise, we always need to watch out for front-induced lows when it's all these cold fronts come down because they are very famous for building them in the Gulf and the East Coast. And that next wave looks like it's headed a little bit further northern. So as you look at your relative humidity, 500 millibar levels according to the Euro, you can see in the next 48 hours that y'all have all this precipitation still coming 
still getting blocked, and it's still going to give y'all a lot of rainfall. Now, as you go towards Friday, this is going to go towards Arkansas, Louisiana, some of Mississippi. But as you go into the weekend and Monday and Tuesday, it's going to start adding up more. The Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, the whole south, and it will carry to the southeast with all that rainfall in about the next six to seven days. But then we have all this precipitation from this Caribbean wave that's passing through. Time for that to come around. And so far, the block is still coming. Difference between the Euro and the GFS. The Euro is showing all this precipitation is still coming towards Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. A lot of heavy rainfall coming and piling up for the southeast. Now, keep in mind, you're already soaked. I know you need rainfall, but like I said yesterday, this is just too much at one time. It is going to cause issues. And the Euro is showing as that cyclone comes out to eastern Pacific, still going towards potentially Baja, California, towards Mexico, that that second disturbance is going to contribute to some energy, and it could form a surface low right over Texas when all this precipitation comes. So whether we get a storm out of that is too far to be sure. Just keep your heads up. Maybe something to look at in the future. And the update with the Euro as all this rainfall adds up. Let's go all the way towards our five days. Five days, in my opinion, will change no matter what. Three days will change. But so far, is bringing a lot of heavy rainfall. And all this red is all two to three inches. You can see this here. It is a lot of rainfall coming to the south. We're talking Dallas, Houston, Austin, Corpus Christi, San Antonio, a lot of people getting a lot of rainfall, plus New Orleans, plus Jackson, Bogalusa, a lot of people in the south is getting a lot of rainfall from this. And as you keep on going to see what could add up from that second system, which will move, you see it just adds up a lot of rainfall. And instead of bringing a little bit towards Texas, now it's carrying into Louisiana. So yesterday we didn't see it go this far, and tomorrow we may see it go even further. And it will go across the southeast, bringing heavy amounts of rainfall, and that's why you'll have all that flash flooding risk. Now the difference is the GFS shows that that block is not going to be too bad on that second cool front, and it's going to go straight up Texas, but it's also going to go into New Mexico, Oklahoma, maybe even some of Colorado and Kansas. It's showing a different pattern Regardless, all this precipitation is coming, and we have time to figure it out. So let's take it a few days at a time. It's just both of them are showing two different things. Still, I know it's not saying much for GFS this season. For the next five days, you can see the difference. It's almost about the same as a Euro, not as much for the Deep South and the Southeast because it's all staying around this region. So if we went from five days to the 10 days, just to do a comparison well, what the GFS sees and what the Euro sees. Euro takes it all over Texas and the Southeast. GFS takes it all just right here. So I put it all into Northern Mexico, all into New Mexico as well. So there's a lot of flash flooding coming for a lot of people. Which way it's going, we still don't know yet. We know within the next few days is going to be a lot by itself. Now, just until Friday evening, it's going to keep adding up to more rainfall for Western Texas central and northern texas so y'all will see some rainfall but this will add up to more as this next round comes in well, three days that's about what you see two days later is when all this rainfall is going to start adding up and then two more days later is when that second wave comes in and starts adding up everything in this orange is anywhere from five to seven inches of rainfall a lot of people will be impacted Look at northern Mexico. You're getting a yellow. That's anywhere from 15 to 20 inches in that one area. I'm sure this will change. This is seven days away. So we could easily see this heaviness move further on land for the U.S. as well. It's not quite known where this is going to shift at, but it's coming. And that's the update I have for you guys. I didn't want to take up too much of your time today. I just want to give you a quick update on what is coming on. Get you on with your day. Hope you have a very great day. A very blessed day. God bless every single one of you. Psalm 1. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. 
And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chafe which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. (laughs) Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, always give praise, always give thanks to our God, for he does have abundance of mercy on us. All power, all glory, always goes to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father, God of Abraham, Father of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.